Hello. Uh, my name is Matt Stone. I'm a software developer with uh, Brocade Communications, and I work specifically on the uh, StackStorm product. And today, I'm going to be telling you a little bit about uh, StackStorm, uh, what is event-driven automation, and uh, then I'm going to give in, go into a couple of use cases that we have, um, specifically with OpenStack and StackStorm. So uh, to begin with, uh, I'm going to give you an overview of, of event-driven automation at large, and then also kind of what our view on that is and how we implement that with StackStorm. Uh, and kind of the heart of it, or the philosophy of it, is that we, um, a lot of us come from operation backgrounds where we're actually operating networks and operating infrastructures uh, just like you guys. And we understand that um, there's a, a lot of pain and sorrow that comes from an infrastructure that fails. And so the heart of what StackStorm is trying to do is actually to take your, uh, your pain and your suffering and your horror and turn it from the flip desk GIF meme, which is my favorite ever, to the happy man uh, meme, which is not my favorite ever, but it's okay too. Um, but the, the reality is it's not exactly a joke, right? Like, while it's funny and paints this funny picture, it's actually what we really intend to do. We really intend to help our operators go from uh, those 3 a.m. calls and turn those into continuing to sleep or continuing to play with your kids after work. And, uh, and, or an automation use case that is uh, really repetitive. We take that and we say, okay, uh, don't do that really repetitive thing anymore. Turn that into something that you can repeat and automate. So. Um, It's not that uncommon that people will have uh, automation in their network or in their infrastructure. They'll use something like Puppet or Chef or Ansible to get a job done, um, and they will manually do that. And it's also not that uncommon for them to have monitoring in their network. They will have um, both of these sitting in isolation. Uh, the heart of what event-driven automation is trying to do is to try and take those two things and link them together. So when some sort of thing happens on the monitoring side, we transition that into taking action on the, uh, on the infrastructure side. So we have this automation that might say, here's a run book that we do under these circumstances. And we have these sensors and these monitoring tools that say, this is a current threshold that we need to look for. So why not link those two things together? And that's at the heart of what StackStorm's trying to do. Um, and the, so the, the kind of the way that we view that uh, at a large level or at a kind of like a philosophical level is uh, these three things. And so this isn't that uncommon from how you approach really any big problem. You kind of take one step, you evaluate where you are, you look at the variables, the data that, that are associated with where you're at right now, you decide which way you need to go, you, have, uh, you confirm that with your team, you decide on that trajectory, you take another step in that direction and you do it again. That's the only really way that you can kind of have these huge complex systems at any kind of scale. And so the, to turn that uh, kind of philosophical datagram or data uh, image into how that actually um, is viewed in a software construct, how we actually work from a StackStorm perspective, is, can, is best described by these uh, four things. So these are kind of the primitives that make up StackStorm. The, uh, on the far left there, you've got sensors, right? And uh, sensors is all about data. Uh, you have data inside of your infrastructure that you need to collect and to analyze and do something with. And so um, a sensor uses that data to produce triggers, OK? So if you've got, for instance, a uh, uh, RAM or CPU utilization is over a certain threshold, that can activate a trigger, OK? And that's very simply what a sensor is. You have data. If that data reaches a certain threshold, trigger. Uh, so next is a rule. And that's where we kind of get our if this, then that type comparison. And uh, a, a rule consumes a trigger from a sensor, OK? So whenever a trigger happens, a rule links that to a workflow. Which uh, so basically, if a trigger sensors or if a trigger is uh, is is seen, then go run this workflow. And a, a workflow, uh, very simply, we utilize very heavily and we contribute very heavily to uh, the Mistral project inside of OpenStack, and that is our workflow language. That's how we take the uh, operator um, knowledge, the operator intent, how he actually uh, typically would go into a device and make configuration changes, etc. That's how, we, um, that's how we capture that, is in a Mistral workflow. And so um, Mistral workflows can be as simple or as complex as the operator's normal job. So you can have branching, you can have with items, you can have all these different complex things, or you can also just say, do this thing, and if that succeeds, do this thing. And so um, Mistral is a, a really powerful tool, and that's, that's how we utilize it. We say, if a trigger is, is, if a trigger is happened, we create a rule that links that to a workflow, and that kind of creates that loop that we were talking about earlier. 
so workflows consume actions or, or trigger or um, uh, instantiate actions or, or call actions. And actions are very simply just an atomic thing that you would do against a device or a, uh, or a node inside of your network. So um, if you've got a, uh, a stack store or an open stack uh, cluster, you would, uh, a action could be go create an instance. Uh, if you've got a network switch, an action could be create this IP address or create this VLAN. And so the, uh, the actions are basically very simply um, very individual things that you would typically do against a, a device. And so we collect those things into a workflow, and that's how you create this um, automation and this complexity that you actually push out and instantiate into the network. Um, so we don't require you to build all of that. Like we, we don't just provide you rules and workflows and say you're on your own for the other two. We actually have a relatively extensive um, amount of integrations. Here's just a uh, screenshot from our GitHub contrib page. And so um, we integrate with OpenStack, obviously, and, and various different other things. Um, the, the, I think it's Panasonic or uh, Philips, the Hue light. We actually have one of those where you can change like a light bulb's color from, uh, from Stackstorm, which is pretty cool. We have like a small example of that at our booth where you can come and actually see we built with a couple of rab Raspberry Pis a sensor that has a REST API and then a light bulb that will change based on what that API is doing. So you can kind of visualize what Stackstorm is actually doing in the background. But we don't require you to build everything from scratch. We have plenty of integrations and uh, certainly encourage more. Stackstorm is built entirely in Python, so all of your integrations will be built in Python too. So, so now I'm going to transition into a couple of use cases. <clears throat> um, these, this is by no means the extent of what you can do with Stackstorm. However, it is two, I think, pretty powerful examples of what you can do. And the first one is actually uh, really cool personally for me. Uh, it's how Mirantis uses it. And so I just I copied this diagram back on here and we'll overlay this with how they're using uh, Stackstorm at each level to, um, to automate a uh, potentially kind of um, an event that would normally wake up an operator. So on the sensor side, um, Mirantis is using Zabbix to monitor uh, their infrastructure. Uh, so they're looking at, in this particular use case, they're, they're looking at a, uh, an individual node in their OpenStack cluster to kind of analyze its health, right? So making sure all the interfaces are up, making sure it's not overutilized from a RAM or CPU perspective, et cetera. So what they do is then they, when they notice there's an issue or a health issue with a node, they'll uh, trigger a, an act, they'll trigger on uh, the sensor side, which has a rule that says, okay, if you see this trigger, let's go ahead and evacuate all of the uh, guests from that node to another clean node that is in a good healthy state. And so what you do there is you basically, what normally would have been an event where you have to get a human involved and you have to say, okay, this server is having something, an issue that is preventing people from accessing their, their guests on top of it. You need to go manually evacuate that server. This is actually doing that for them and moving it to another clean server. And so that is a real depiction of you going from flip desk uh, type attitude to, all right, I'm happy. Uh, that happened automatically, and, and my customers are happy, and I'm happy because I didn't have to get waken up and, at 3 a.m. to go do that manually. Uh, so that's actually the that's use case for that uh, Mirantis is doing. And I've purposefully not gone into too much detail there because they have an entire talk on that later. And I would really encourage you to go, talk to, 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 go to that talk because they're going to be going into way more detail about what they're doing there, far better than I could because they're the ones that implemented it. All right, so next we are going to talk about, um, let's see if I can get my mouse over here. So this is um, the way that, um, that Brocade has chosen to move forward with how we integrate with, um, uh, with Neutron. And so effectively we've got um, Stackstorm sitting in between Neutron and the network. Um, so what that actually gains you is, and this is the workflow that we're going to be running here, but what that gains you is the ability to, on a Neutron call, run a workflow instead of just an atomic action inside of your network. And so this can actually, you can actually, you have the ability now to grow that in complexity. So if you're doing relatively complex things in your network, like taking into account bandwidth utilization, et cetera, you can capture that in a workflow. And so this is the workflow that will be run inside of, uh, inside of uh, this, this demo. And so, let's see. In a second, he'll be, uh, this is a, obviously a video recording, but this will be transitioning to uh, the uh, OpenStack side where we'll create a network. And this is, uh, this is very simply um, Brocade's instantiation of like a VXLAN type overlay. And so you've got uh, a VLAN that goes from the host to the, uh, to the network. And then we create BGP uh, peerings with all the top racks, which is to create VXLAN tunnels across that. So right now we're creating a uh, we're creating that uh, network inside of OpenStack, and then we this is the enterprise version of, of Stackstorm, which is called BWC or Brocade Workflow Composer. 
And this is a Mistral workflow that's running. So basically, you can see here, it's um, on the previous screen, it was going through each item that it was doing. And here, we're actually just posting some of the data that we're, that we're um, collecting and running against the network into Slack for chat ops to let your operations know what's happening. Um, and here we're just showing you the, um, the switches, the configuration on them, seeing that they're actually changed. So you can see that VLAN 128 was created. We'll swap back to the uh, OpenStack instance and show you that, in fact, VLAN 128 was created. And we'll show you the MAC address table to show you that, in fact, there are no there's nothing in it right now because we have no instances created. And then we'll go back into uh, OpenStack and create an instance. So. Uh, this instance will be put into the VLAN network that we just created. So from, from uh, this, the host's perspective, it's just a VLAN down to the switch. Um, but where the complexity is is in the network where it actually creates those VXLAN tunnels. So now that instance is created. Uh, what that's doing now is going and provisioning uh, the host ports on the switches to say, OK, this is, in fact, going to utilize VLAN 128 uh, to talk to our network. And then we'll log back into the uh, to the um, instance on, on OpenStack to see that it does, in fact, work, and you can ping an address. So here we're showing you the MAC address table to show you that it is populated with the MAC addresses for the instances. And then back over to the instance to run a couple of normal Linux commands. So we're showing you that it's configured with the IP address, and then we can ping across to another instance. And then we will show you back in the switches uh, those VXLAN tunnels that I was talking about earlier. Um, so there's the tunnels that have been created to handle that node. So I'm a little early. I have a, a little bit of wrap up to do. But that was uh, two use cases for uh, StackStorm. The uh, primary thing I want to key in on there, especially on that last one, is the, uh, the ability to kind of uh, utilize um, Neutron to say, this is a command I want to run against the network, and say, and from Stackstorm's perspective say, OK, that might need to be a more complex workflow. I might need to take more things into account. And so the way that we're leveraging that is really is pretty quite interesting. And so from Brocade's perspective, we can have that single call into Stackstorm actually control various different devices, whether it be an MLX or a VDX, which is two devices that Brocade sells. And so um, it's a, a pretty cool way. I hope that that um, kind of sums up for you what event-driven automation is, what we think event-driven automation is. And uh, just like to, to reiterate, if you, would, if you want to come by our booth and, and take a deep dive into some of these, these topics, I would really encourage you to, because uh, there's only so much I can do in a 20-minute presentation um, about these concepts. As you well know, if you're into automation at all, that these things can get really complex pretty quickly. And so if you're interested in these topics, want to have a deep dive conversation, we'll be at the booth. We have a demo, like I said, at the booth that you can see that's relatively cool. I spend a lot of time on it, so I think it's cooler than most people. Um, but it's, it's pretty cool. It shows you like a physical representation of what StackStorm is, and we can go into deeper topics about this stuff. So um, if you want, you can. Uh, we also have a giveaway that we're doing uh, where we're giving away a um, GoPro and a Raspberry Pi. And the way that you are eligible for that is like a hacker style CTF type games. So, like uh, it's inspired by some of the, the contests they do at DEF CON. So if you've got a little time and you want to uh, spend it solving some puzzles, come by and see us. We've got, we're giving away some stuff for that. And uh, again, the Mirantis talk, please go see that. That'll give you some more information as well. And I uh, hope to see you at the booth. Thank you.